Good, good. I'm really excited about where everybody is. You know, I mean, for what, our 10th, 11th day of practice. Um, so I got some red zone stuff in today where we just put that install in. So we got some work to do there. We got work to do a lot of places, but I'm really happy with what um, the whole group of guys is their work ethic, how they're coming out every day and, and working on doing their job to help this football team. The fact that you guys are new, do you think that helps them work hard and try to impress and all that stuff? Um, or is yeah, that I guess so. I mean, I would think so, right? You'd hope so. Yeah, I mean, you would hope that. And you see that? I would say something, but I would, then I'd probably get in trouble. <laughs> you know how nice you are when you first start dating her, right? Yeah. So I think they, I think they, uh, I think they, um, uh, but I, I don't, but I mean, I think they're a good group of guys. I mean, I like their work, I like their work ethic. They want to be good, which is important. And, and um, the guys that don't have a passion for the game, it's hard, to, it's a hard game to play if you don't have passion for it. And the guys that don't have passion usually weed themselves out. And, they, and what's left are the guys that really love to play the game, want to be coached, and want to be good. And I think that's about where the point we are right now. Coach, someone said the other day that you, you've reached the point where you can't give all seven quarterbacks a ton of reps. No, and you the saw today. Kind of you saw today that the, you saw today the there was three group. or four. We kind of been rotating that. Um, you know, obviously Khalil, but I think all that things had a really solid camp, and I'm really. Really excited about uh, where he is as far as our, our passing game. You know, he's really picking that up and starting to make some good progression reads and reading and understanding coverages and those type of things. Um, after that, it's just kind of a committee of guys. Uh, it's hard. You can't give seven other guys enough reps, you know. So uh, we basically just kind of pared down. We grab a couple of, uh, different two every day and kind of give them a lot of reps. And now today was a was a big scrimmage for a lot of those younger guys, and um, and then now we got to start making some hard decisions about those guys. If the I mean, I'm looking at seven, I'm looking at six, Khalil and six other, all the other six quarterbacks. I think they're all freshmen or redshirt freshmen. You know, they're all one year or two yeah. year guys. So, you know, if the season were to start tomorrow, who would who would be that second guy behind Khalil? Has anybody separated themselves? No, no. Thank goodness it doesn't start tomorrow. <laughs> Can you give us kind of just a little thumbnail scouting report or what you've seen so far from each of those other quarterbacks? I can go one by one if you, if you prefer. But to oh. start with Kahari, like what's kind of the... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think no matter. I mean, they're all, everybody's got different skill sets. Um, you know, I think what we're looking for is guys that are cons can come out every day and be consistent, which is hard when you're, the, when you're not getting reps every day, right? Uh, so you've got to learn how to take mental reps with actually not being on the field because your opportunities aren't like Khalil's, who's got 50 snaps a team a day and you might have 10. So it's a little bit harder on those guys. Um, I think Kahari's really working hard on being more consistent, you know, instead of being, hey, two great plays and then, oh, what, what, was, what was that? All right, uh, that's where he is. Red's had a, had a solid camp. He's a pretty smart guy, obviously. He knows football. Um, so he's got to learn to play within his abilities and what, what he can do as a quarterback. Really excited about the two young guys, Jamari and uh, KD and Kevin. I'm, I'm, I mean, for both true freshmen, I think those, those are two guys that have definitely have the skill set. I definitely love to play the game. Definitely kind of get it as quarterbacks. I mean, I like how they act as quarterbacks. And for them, it's just a matter of how many reps you can get them. And then, and then Tobar and Lucas is the same thing. How much of an advantage do uh, Rhett and Kahari have from being here in spring? Well, yeah, him, Rhett, Kahari, and Tovar all have a definite advantage because they got 15 practices in this offense ahead of the other guys. So what do you, uh, once we get to the season, what do you sort of hope to get out of your backup quarterback? What is the end goal? Is it to do all the same things that the first guy can do? Is yeah, it to we just don't, be competent? We, yeah. What? yeah, we don't. And obviously, as a play caller, you in the back of your mind, you know who's in the game and kind of what his strengths are. I mean, what, what, what I, I, would, I would hopefully play to what he does best. And obviously if it's Kevin Doyle in there, I'm not maybe calling the exact same plays I'm calling with Khalil Tate, right? Um, so, but as far as we don't coach that way, we coach, we, we expect them all to learn all the exact same stuff and be just as well versed in the offense as the next guy. You say you don't put a limit on him? No limit on him, no. We, is, don't spoon, we don't spoon feed them. Yeah. What is uh, Coach Someone's level of involvement in the quarterback room? Um, well, I mean, Coach Someone and I have been together a long time, and he's been a lot of, around a lot of great quarterbacks and so have I, so he's like invaluable as far as uh, 
you know, every now and then you need that good cop, bad cop deal going, right? <laughs> um, and he's got some great insight, and so it's nice that they can go to him. And uh, he, and, and like sometimes as a position coach, I, you get locked kind of in the details of what's going on out there, and oh, is this progression right, or what, what was the cover and all this stuff, instead of seeing the big picture of a hey, down and distance field position and those type of things, which somebody's really good at. You know, so he's back there and he's, you know, keeps talking to him about that part of it. So it's, 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 it's really good. It, it actually takes, makes my job a lot easier. Is he the good cop or the, or the bad cop, or does it depend on Well, the I day? can't give that information away. <laughs> <laughs> then you've blown, the, you've blown the whole gig, right? <laughs> Is he different in any way from other head coaches that you've worked under as far as his input on, in the quarterback? Well, we gotta, rem we gotta remember that he is, he, what, he, when he was an offensive coordinator, position coach, and receiver coach, is that he's he's a really good head coach, but he's a really good football coach. You know, and I'm not saying that because he's my boss. He is. I've known him for a long time, and so he he knows. I mean, he's had had his offenses when he was head coach, and when he was a coordinator, have always been top offenses in the country. And he's coached guys like Johnny Manziel and Case Keenum, and you know, at Oklahoma, Sam Bradford, and all those type of guys. So his his uh, experience and his knowledge of that position and this type of offense, because we're kind of, you know, we're, we're, I mean, he, we always are on the same stuff, is, is really a great help. He said the other day that the head coach and the quarterback. So basically, the all, all the good plays were his suggestions, <laughs> all the bad plays were mine. That's what I'm supposed to say, right? He said the other day that the head coach and the quarterback have kind of a unique bond in that they kind of get most of the blame when things go badly and most of the credit. When things go well, have you found that to be the case throughout your years in this business? Like, yeah, but that's that's true every level, every place, right? You know, everybody. I mean, it's a head coach, it's a quarterback, and then see, here's what I've always thought is that not people don't really understand defense that well. They just know if you stop them or that you don't stop them, right? They don't know why is he running corner trap? Or why does he run that fire zone more? He keeps running that damn fire zone play. Why is it, it's not work? But everybody's an offensive coordinator, right? Yes. So, so, you know, why did he, he should be running the bootleg. Did he run the bootleg? Why did he run the bootleg? So uh, um, it's nice to have, have uh, somebody around to take some of the heat on that stuff. How would you describe the state of the offensive line at this point in camp? I think they're a work in progress. I think, you know, obviously the numbers are down there and there's a lot of youth in that group. Um, I really have seen the lights kind of come on in them just in the last two practices. I think they're really starting to understand. What's awesome is we get to go against Marcel, and he shows them a lot of different looks, you know, a lot of movement, and all the things they're going to see during the season. So it's been great for our offensive line to be able to work against Marcel's defense. What have you seen out of Khalil with his intermediate passing? I think I, I think when he when he stays in his progression and his system, I think he's he's been he's been awesome, you know. And, and there's that fine line. And then sometimes he gets out of it and he goes and does a little street stuff and, you know, and, and you know, just makes plays. But there's a fine line. I don't want to coach that out of him. I still want that part. But at times I want him to stay within the boundaries of the offense. In that vein, we've kind of heard since he's been here that he's kind of like a gamer, you know, maybe someone who's the best yeah, parts of his don't game don't show I don't up buy in practice. It. You don't, don't buy, buy that theory? That. No. no. Okay. No, I don't buy that. My guys have got to play. They, they got to treat every day as a game day. So I want them to win the game on Monday's practice, Tuesday's practice, Wednesday's practice, and Thursday's practice. And then Friday, Saturday, go out and have some fun. All right. So that's what we try have to do. Have you had to coach guys. him out of any of those kind of bad habits that maybe he had? Yeah, and it was a new offense for him, and he's, we're asking him to do some things maybe he hadn't had to do in the past ever, you know. And so there's a learning curve for him there, and I think he's really starting to embrace being a quarterback and not a gamer. Right? A quarterback works at his craft every day. He seems to have taken all of this acclaim that he's gotten in stride. Is that just his nature, yeah, he's, or yeah, he's is that good, some, something you guys have kind a, of told he's, him to He's do? a fun guy to coach. You know, um, he's always got a smile on his face. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't see him. He's, I didn't know him before. Well, I did try to recruit him at UCLA as a linebacker, by the way. All right. Linebacker? Yeah, yeah. We were, but then we signed this other kid named Josh Rosen, so we stopped recruiting him. <laughs> But uh, um, no, I mean, since I've been around him just for this short time, he's, he's, he's a lot of fun to be around. He's got his moods like we all do, you know? He's fun to be around, he likes to play the game. He was talking the other day about it. there's kind of a reunion with you and 
and Kevin and him now that you guys are both kind of trying to recruit him at different schools and you all kind of ended up together. Yeah, my destiny. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, did, have you participated in any of the ribbing of him for the SI cover? Have you guys put like a giant poster up in the QB room or anything? Or? No, we no. we worry about what we got to do. We, we don't listen to outside noise, so we don't even pay attention to that stuff. Since uh, spring, we've heard a lot of good things about Gary Brightwell. What does he bring to the table? Yeah, I mean, him and JJ, I think, as far as a one-two guy in the backfield is pretty exciting. Yeah, he's really, I mean, Gary, as you, if, if, I don't know if you guys don't go to practice, do you? He's been an explosive. Just they don't love him. Yeah, he's a, he's, he's a really explosive guy, smart. Um, I think one of the things that, that, that I really like about our running backs is that, is that both of them have very high football IQ, which is which is very helpful for, for the other 10 guys on the field and for Khalil. Um, so that's been great, and they're both both him and JJ have been have been. I mean, I never notice them, and when I don't notice them, then they're doing a great job. <laughs> what, what role do you envision for Bryce Wolma and the other tight ends? In this um, I think more. I think more. It's been a while since I've had a true guy like Bryce. You know, they can be an inline guy, can be a move guy. I can put him out in space. You know, the you know the guy we're all looking for, and I mean, he's a he's good in space, running routes, catching the ball. He's good enough in the box to, for us to, to help our run game. So um, we're in a lot more tight end type sets than that than I've been in probably like seven or six or seven years. Did, so it's been good. Does anyone fit that Thomas Duarte mold here a little bit? Well, you know, Thomas Thomas is uh, he's probably was more of a, a uh, route runner and all that than Bryce is. But then Thomas, I could never put Thomas in the box and. You know, at that point, now I know he does it now for Miami, but you know, he was more of a kind of a flex kind of guy for us. Where with Bryce, I can flex him out in, I can bring him down in the box. Does, does anyone like Zach fit that mold too? Yeah, Jamie's more of a more of a than Thomas Duarte mold. He's you know, he's a little bit lighter, so he's a guy that you know we, we try to keep off the ball, let him match him up on linebackers and things like that. And then the young one, the young one too, I think could grow into is. I'm really excited about how, where he's at right now. Sure. Um, when you watch film, you're obviously you're paying the most attention to the offense and the quarterbacks, but is there anyone on defense who's consistently jumped out at you or you're like, God, that guy's constantly yeah, in the backfield? Yeah, that gang number seven, <laughs> all right? I wish we would block him once in a while. It seems like we never – I need to put more plays in where we block him. Uh, no, um, the defense has been has – been, I mean, it's been it's, – I don't really, like you said, I really don't pay attention. That guy flashes to me every now and then. When we're, when we're practicing or, or going to team or anything like that, I don't really notice who's in for them. But I know what they have done for us is, is making us a better offense. All right, folks.